With nearly 8 billion people on Earth, wild spaces are under constant threat. And with those wild spaces, the species that live in them are often reduced to populations that are only a fraction of their original size. This is part two of my series on extremely rare animals. In this video, we're looking at 10 of the rarest species on Earth. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's both educational and entertaining. If you like this kind of content, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment, or even subscribing to the channel. I also want to say a special thanks to my patrons. It's thanks to their ongoing support that I'm able to produce a new video every week. If you want to join me on Patreon and get 24-hour early access to every video, check out the link in the video description below. Now, let's get into the video. Almost half of the world's cetacean species are found in the waters around New Zealand, but only one species is found there exclusively, Hector's dolphin. It's the smallest known species of dolphin in the world, and it's divided into two subspecies. Around the South Island is the far more numerous South Island Hector's dolphin, which has about 15,000 individuals over the age of one left in the wild. But on the west coast of the North Island lives the critically endangered Maui dolphin. There are estimated to be fewer than 60 left that are over the age of one. They reach a maximum length of 1.7 meters and have light gray bodies with black masks and fins giving them a striking and beautiful appearance. Despite being fully protected in New Zealand's waters, they're facing a range of human threats. The main threat to Maui dolphins is fishing. While they aren't being directly targeted, they're commonly caught in fishing nets. The nets hold them underwater, causing them to drown. The second leading cause of death for the subspecies is toxoplasmosis. This is a protozoa parasitic infection that's only spread by one animal, domestic cats. It's believed that the parasite makes its way into rivers and streams on land by infected cats. It manages to infect the Maui dolphins, causing them to get sick and eventually die. While more and more protective measures are being put into place to try to save the Maui dolphins, their extremely low birth rate has made recovery slow. With their current numbers, an average of only one baby per year is being born. The Yangtze giant softshell turtle is one of the largest freshwater turtles in the world. It's known to live in the Yangtze River and Lake Tai in central China, as well as a small region of southern China and northern Vietnam. They've been hunted for centuries for their meat and for their shells, leading to them becoming extremely rare by the 21st century. It's one of the most secretive species of turtle, mostly staying deep underwater and rarely surfacing to breathe. This has made it really difficult to know how many wild specimens actually still exist in the world. In the early 2000s, only one female was known to still exist. She was transferred from the zoo where she was being kept to another zoo which had a male specimen. Over the coming years, she would lay multiple batches of eggs, including one after being artificially inseminated, but none of the eggs ever hatched. It's believed that a poor diet at the zoo led to the inviability of all of her eggs. Sadly, in 2019, she died. In 2012, evidence of wild turtles surfaced in Vietnam Six years later, in 2018, scientists finally managed to confirm that two more turtles were in fact surviving in Xuan Can Lake, and genetic testing done in 2020 confirmed that one of them was a female. Unfortunately, in 2023, the female was found to have died of unknown causes, and it's unknown if she ever successfully laid any fertile eggs. There have been other reported sightings, but extensive surveys have failed to find any other living turtles. Today, only the captive male in China and the wild male in Vietnam are known to still be alive.
Sharks are famous ocean predators, but not many people know that they occasionally wander up streams and rivers. In fact, the shark attacks that the movie Jaws was based off of mostly occurred in fresh water by what was likely a bull shark that swam into the creeks and lakes of New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. But only one species of shark in the whole world is known to exclusively live in fresh water, the Ganges shark. The species was described in 1839, but has always been rare, and as a result, has been poorly studied. Found only in India and Bangladesh, they generally don't measure more than 180 centimeters in length and have a stocky build. They also have very small eyes, which is considered further evidence that they live exclusively in murky freshwater habitats, thus eliminating the need for good eyesight. Two other species of shark, the Borneo River Shark and the Irrawaddy River Shark, have recently been reassessed to actually be the same species as the Ganges Shark, expanding their range to Pakistan, Myanmar, and Indonesia. Despite this, they remain extremely rare. Their river habitats are heavily exploited and polluted by humans, and fishing continues to threaten the species. They're listed as critically endangered, with an estimated population of fewer than 250 left in the world. The Mormon Meadowmark is a species of butterfly that ranges from the Midwestern U.S. to the Pacific Ocean, from parts of southern Canada down to northern Mexico. While it is wide-ranging, the populations are highly disjointed, leading to differences in morphology, host plants, and genetics. At least 20 subspecies are recognized, and one of them is considered to be among the rarest butterflies in the world. Lang's Meadowmark differs from other Mormon metal marks, in part due to its coloration. It has far more black on the wings than other subspecies. It also exclusively uses naked buckwheat for breeding purposes. And it also has an extremely limited range. Lang's metal mark is strongly associated with sand dune environments, specifically the sand dunes of the Sacramento River in the San Francisco Bay Area. But in the early 1900s, their habitat was heavily altered. Sand from the dunes was taken to produce bricks to help with the expanding human settlement of the area. And with the removal of the sand, the plant ecology changed. Today, only a few acres of dunes survive. And this is the only home of Lang's metal mark. A count done of the species in 2008 found 131 butterflies but only three years later, they were down to only 30. Estimates today are all at fewer than 50 Lang's metal marks surviving along the banks of the Sacramento River. More actually exist in captivity than in the wild, as a breeding program was established in 2007 to help the butterflies. Despite regular releases of both adults and larvae, the butterflies are barely holding on. Off the west coast of Canada is Vancouver Island. This large Pacific Island is about the same size as Taiwan and home to one of the rarest mammals in the world, the Vancouver Island Marmot. Canada has only five endemic species of mammal, and this is one of them. The Vancouver Island Marmot is a large rodent with males weighing as much as seven and a half kilograms. They differ from other marmots genetically, behaviorally, and morphologically. They're a rich chocolate brown color with light markings on the nose, chest, and on the top of the head. In 1997, park managers noticed how few marmots were left. They captured wild animals and sent them off to the Toronto Zoo to begin a breeding program to help preserve the species. Several other breeding programs were established in the coming years but wild numbers remained critically low. A survey in 2003 found that only 21 wild Vancouver Island marmots were left living, spread out between four different mountains on the island. Release of captive bred animals began. Since the year 2000, about 450 Vancouver Island marmots have been successfully born and weaned in captivity. 
and new populations of the marmots have been established in the wild. The species inhabits meadows in the alpine regions of Vancouver Island, but this habitat has become increasingly rare. This has happened naturally over the last 10,000 years, but studies show that clear-cutting of the forest around the meadows has sped up the decline of the species. As more cleared land becomes available, the marmots spread out to a point where they are no longer able to interact with each other. Because they are social animals, they rely on each other for safety from predation. Once they spread out, they become prey far more easily. This is known as the Ali effect. It has also caused the marmots, which learn much of their behavior culturally by living in groups, to lose learned skills, becoming solitary and hostile towards each other. Thankfully, recovery efforts are working, and from a low of 21 animals in 2003, the population of Vancouver Island marmots has rebounded to around 250 wild animals today. In the Ethiopian highlands is a canine so rare that it carries the title of Africa's most endangered carnivore. The Ethiopian wolf is limited to seven mountain ranges, only living above 3,000 meters. Traditionally, local people groups didn't hunt the wolves, as they believed that anyone who wore their skin was likely to die. Nonetheless, by the time it became known to Western science, it was already quite rare, and by the 1930s, they were already recognized as needing protection, but they wouldn't receive it until 1974. Unfortunately, around the same time was the outbreak of the Ethiopian Civil War, which was devastating for the wolf populations. Being shot by soldiers was a regular occurrence, and at the same time, an intense rabies outbreak decimated Ethiopian wolf packs. With the end of the Ethiopian Civil War in 1991, the remaining wolf population stabilized, but many of them remain critically low. The largest population is in the Bale Mountains, with an estimated 250 wolves still surviving there. But in other parts of their range, populations have declined to below 50 individuals left. There are estimated to be fewer than 400 Ethiopian wolves across their range today, and they continue to face serious threats. Habitat destruction, overgrazing by cattle, hybridization with domestic dogs, and ongoing persecution from farmers means that their numbers continue to decline. With 62 described species, hornbills are the old world equivalent to toucans. Perhaps the most famous hornbill is Zazu from The Lion King, but the variety and beauty of these birds stretches across Africa, Asia, and Melanesia. In the Philippines lives the rarest species of hornbill, and one of the rarest birds in the world, the Sulu hornbill. Originally found on the islands of Jolo, Sanga Sanga, and Tawi Tawi, the birds have been hunted to extinction on two of the three islands they used to inhabit. Today, they're only found on the island of Tawi Tawi. The Sulu hornbill is a large black bird with a white tail. They inhabit tropical moist forest and are only known to occur on mountain slopes. But it's believed that this isn't their preferred habitat. Because all of the lowland forests on Tawi Tawi have been cleared for human habitation and for palm oil and coconut plantations, the birds have been forced to live on mountain slopes as this is the last space that has the forest habitat that they require. They nest in large trees and feed mainly on fruit, especially figs though they are known to occasionally eat insects and lizards. Sulu hornbills have been observed traveling as much as a kilometer from their nest in search of fruit. But with more and more of their habitat disappearing, finding sufficient food has become increasingly difficult. To make matters worse, the birds are still being hunted by local people, and hunting is considered the biggest direct threat to the species today. Only about 27 Sulu hornbills are known to still be living in the wild. With very little being done to protect the species, the Sulu hornbill remains in serious danger of extinction in the very near future.
found only in the Tumnin River of eastern Russia and the Sea of Japan. The Sakhalin sturgeon is a critically endangered species of fish. As with other sturgeons, they're huge, growing to as much as two and a half meters in length. It's mostly an olive green color, with a lighter belly. The Sakhalin sturgeon spend much of the year in the Japan Sea, where they feed on shrimp, crabs, and other arthropods. But when it's time to spawn, they migrate up the Tumnin River to mate and lay their eggs. Because their migration habits are similar to salmon, they're regularly caught as bycatch in nets that are set up to catch other species of fish. On top of this, the river habitat that they rely on for reproduction has become increasingly polluted, especially by mining operations, oil production, and agriculture in the area. The species also takes a long time to reach sexual maturity, not doing so until they reach eight or nine years old. With all of these factors working against them, only about 30 Sakhalin sturgeon are thought to enter the Tumnin River annually to breed. Their numbers are currently being sustained by fish farming, but without serious changes to water management and fishing practices in the area, the species will likely disappear. On the island of Vangunu in the Solomon Islands, rumors of a large orange rat were circulating. It was said to be over a foot long and living a secretive life in the small patches of remaining forest on the island. Unfortunately, no one could find it. After years of searching, researchers finally got their lucky break in 2015. As loggers were cutting down a 30-foot tree, a park ranger happened to be nearby watching when he saw an animal come crashing down from the canopy. Unfortunately, the animal died from its fall. But fortunately, the ranger recognized the animal as the rumored giant orange rat of the island, and he collected its body to be sent off to researchers. Just as the rumors had claimed, it was in fact a rusty orange color, and it measured 46 centimeters long. Examination of the skeleton, skull, and DNA confirmed that it was a new species, and the Vangunu giant rat was scientifically described in 2017. Known locally as Vika, it's believed to eat nuts, coconuts, and fruit. While it hasn't been formally assessed, researchers believe that it's likely already critically endangered due to the limited available habitat on Vangunu Island. After the initial discovery, the rat wasn't seen again for six years, until 2021, when a series of camera traps were set up in the last remaining lowland primary forest in an effort to capture footage of a living individual. Four Vangunu giant rats were captured on camera, giving a glimmer of hope for the species. Unfortunately, the last of the forest habitat available to them only measures about 80 kilometers squared, and there are plans to continue logging it. Madagascar is one of the most ecologically devastated islands in the world. 80% of the forests on the island have been cleared. 90% of plant species on the island are endemic, while 85% of the animal species are endemic. Dozens have already gone extinct, and nearly half are threatened with extinction. Madagascar has around 75 species of chameleon, and one of them is among the rarest reptiles in the world. On the southwest coast of the island is the municipality of Belalanda. One of the primary sources of fuel in the area is charcoal, and in order to produce it, large numbers of trees need to be cut down. Over time, the native forest was entirely removed and replaced by non-native trees. In 1970, a pair of herpetologists were visiting the area searching for new species of chameleon when they stumbled on a large green species with a white stripe down the side and white lips. It was officially described, but it didn't take long for scientists to realize that the Bellalanda chameleon was already in peril. The last of the species were living almost entirely on the non-native trees that had replaced their original forest habitat. And these trees 
were still regularly being cut down for ongoing charcoal production. The chameleons also had a tiny range of no more than four square kilometers, and their numbers were dwindling. Not only were their trees being cut down, but they were also being routinely hunted for the pet trade. The Bellalanda chameleon has become so rare that they've gone as long as 15 years without an official sighting. It wasn't until 2009 that a formal study of the species began, and in 2010, a small area known as PK32 Ranobe was protected to help local endemic species. The chameleons are still monitored within the protected area, but the actual number of chameleons existing in the wild isn't known, as they dwell in the forest canopy, making spotting them extremely difficult. Current estimates put the number of wild Bellalanda chameleons at fewer than 250, but with the protection of their habitat, there is hope for their recovery. And that's it for today's video. Do you know of any other species that are extremely rare? If you liked this video, you might want to watch part one. Click the thumbnail on the screen to check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.